G'day, I'm Rob Malicki. Uh, you can see my bio right here, but that's not what's important today. What you need to know is that I'm actually on the New Colombo Plan Reference Group, and most importantly from your perspective, I'm also a panelist on the New Colombo Plan Scholarship interview panels. Um, I've been doing this for the last couple of years, and what I thought would be awesome for those guys, that's you, um, preparing for your interview in just a short amount of time, was to give you a bit of my perspective on what um, we like to see as panellists and the best way that you can prepare for your interview. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna give you some really good tips, stuff to think about, stuff that can help you prepare for your scholarship interview. And you're also gonna to get to hear from previous New Colombo Plan scholars and what they recommend you think about and do in advance of that interview. All right, let's get started. Now, let's be honest. Um, we're all friends here, so I'm gonna lose this jacket because I know some of you folks are gonna wanna put a jacket on when you come to your new Colombo Plan interview. That's normal, but for today, let's keep this chilled and cool and help you guys prepare as best we can. Okay, before you even start thinking about your interview and start reading the, the criteria and preparing your answers and um, preparing for the interview, you need to do something else. And that's to think a bit about yourself and what your own mission is and what your own passions and goals are. This is gonna become really clear as we get a little bit deeper into these videos and you see um, some of the things that you should be thinking about during your actual interview. Before you even start preparing about some of the concrete elements of the program, have a think about what you actually want to achieve. Are you passionate about cats and dogs? Are you passionate about banking, about the environment? What things interest you? What's your mission in life? The reason for that is, as you'll see as we go deeper into this video, um, it's really important when you get stuck and you don't have a concrete example, you need to be able to fall back on what your actual aspirations are. So before you do anything else, take yourself somewhere quiet, sit, look up at the sky, look at the moon and the stars, whatever you want to do, and have a think about what's actually important to you and what your values are, because that's going to be gold for you going forward. Okay, so you're probably freaking out like heck, wondering what on earth is the panel gonna ask you when you walk into that room? It's really not that complicated. Obviously, I can't give you the exact questions you're gonna get asked, but there's an easy way to prep. Read the selection criteria. For the scholarships, the New Colombo Plan Secretariat actually make it crystal clear the sort of things that they're looking for in scholars. And what you can do is actually go to those selection criteria read into them and think about the kinds of questions that you might get asked. Even if you can't think of what kind of questions you might get asked, what you can do is think about those selection criteria and the exact things that you have either on your resume or, as we were just talking about, in your plans, your goals, your aspiration, your life mission that will help you respond to those selection criteria. If you haven't read those selection criteria, that is port of call number one. All right, so one of the things that's really important when you walk into your interview is that you actually really understand what the new Colombo plan is all about. So one of the things you'll hear a lot from some of the former scholarship panel uh, um, recipients is that it's critical for you to tell your own story and to be yourself. But the thing that's essential to know is that participating as a new Colombo plan scholar is about more than just you. And there's a huge part of the new Colombo plan that is about the impact of this program on Australia and Australia's place in the region. So understand what the new Colombo plan is all about, how it's structured, what the goals are, because that's gonna really help you answer a couple of questions as we uh, get into the interviews. Okay, so one of the things to think about as you're preparing for your interview, you know, we talked a little bit about mission and vision and where you want to head with your life and what your goals might be. And that's a critical thing to remember for your actual interview because this whole process is about your potential and what you can contribute to Australia's relationship beyond, you know, within the Asia Pacific as well as here in the country itself. So this is all about your potential as a scholar. So we were just talking about the fact that, you know, yes, you can talk about yourself. Some people are going to have tons to talk about. You know, we've seen people on the, on the, on the scholarship interview um, panels who've done, geez, more stuff than I've done in 37 years. They've done in 22 years and they're rock stars and that's amazing. But some of you guys won't have got that, you know, ridiculous resume that's got, you know, 100 things on it and that's okay. Because what we're inter interested in when we're um, interviewing you is your potential. So that's why it's critical for you to be able to not only be able to talk about the stuff that you've done, 
but the stuff that you want to do and that's what you need to think really hard about. The other thing I want to say about that is don't put lipstick on a pig. You know, everyone that's sitting on that interview panel have been on hundreds of interview panels before and you can't fudge your way through something that you don't have. So if you hit a question and you don't feel like you've got a really concrete example, don't try and like ring out or milk um, an example time and time and time again. So like let's say you've been on the university newspaper. If you've used that response in one of your responses to a question, don't use it like 10 times over because that's actually not what counts. That's not showing us what your potential is. What we much would rather hear about is like, you know what, I haven't got a concrete example of something I've done that addresses that question. Let me tell you about what I wanna do, what I'm passionate about, what my goals are. That's where the gold is. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't see you there. Let's talk a little bit about the composition of the panel. So your new Colombo Plan Scholarship Interview Panel is gonna have four people sitting on it. Usually there's going to be um, a retired diplomat, no, maybe not even necessarily retired, but somebody who's been in the Foreign Service. So the last two panels that I've been in have been led by former Australian ambassadors to various countries. Um, there's also going to be people representing the business sector, as well as uh, somebody from the public service, sometimes um, from the Department of Education are the people that I've sat on the panel with. So you have a little bit of diversity on your panel. Now let me tell you a little bit about what it's like for us. The interview panels, depending on which country um, or countries the interview panel is assessing, will last you know, two or three days. So you have to think that the, uh, the, the panel will actually be sitting there in the same room that you'll be in for about 20 minutes, sitting there for two or three days. So they actually end up being pretty long days and we do see a lot of people and hear a lot of responses. What that means is that you really have to stick out in those 20 minutes. Now what's great about the panels, the panels are very good uh, in terms of communication, so once that interview is finished, we'll actually talk a lot about the answers that you've given and how that meets the goals of the program. So if you can bring things to the interview, like a little bit of humour, some really interesting examples, or even be really prepared in terms of what your mission and goals are, those are the kinds of things that will stick out to a panel that are literally sitting around for three days. Okay, next tip. So you've had the time to prepare. Maybe your university has been doing mock interviews with you. You've had time to think about your mission, your future goals, etc. Maybe you've read in detail about the new Colombo plan, the goals of the program, what it's hoping to achieve, and how you and your potential can fit into that broader picture. Now let's think about what it's like when you actually arrive at DFAT to have that interview. When you get shown up to where the interviews are actually being held, you're actually going to get handed a list of the questions that you're going to get asked in the interview itself. Uh, I don't remember if it's about four or five questions that we ask. Now, this is a really critical moment for you. If, um, if I'm right, and I think I'm, I think I'm probably right about this, you're probably going to be pooing your pants at this moment, to be frank. Because yes, there's so much on the line and you really want to do a good job. The thing to remember is that by this stage, you are already prepared. What we've seen when some students come into the room to actually do their interview is that they've spent their 10 minutes before the interview literally writing out notes, 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 pages of notes, reams of notes, dot points. And you know what? In the end, that doesn't actually help you that much. And this comes back to a bit of psychology, okay? Because inside our brains, we have two different levels of uh, human brain, right? We have the, um, the primitive brain, which basically makes um, a lot of those sort of spontaneous decisions. It processes a whole ton of information and is responsible for intuition. Then you've also got the, um, the modern uh, primate brain, which is much more the sort of critical thinking part of our brains. And our tendency when we get thrown something like a list of questions is to use that front part of the brain, the new part of the brain, which is all about like process critical thinking, must prepare. Don't do it. Okay. At this stage, you're walking in, if you've prepared well, you should be able to read those questions and actually have an intuitive feeling about how you should be responding to them. What's much more important to do, sure, jot down a few dot points if you absolutely must, a few key examples of things that you definitely don't want to miss, but don't sit there writing tons of notes because that's really not going to help you. Sit there and think, look at the wall, Look at a piece of artwork, because DFAT's got some pretty awesome artwork on the wall, and just reflect on those questions, because when the time comes and you get asked that, the answers are here, guys. The answers are already inside you. 
having them on paper, firstly, isn't going to help you. And if you spend your whole time looking down at your crutch, do you think that's going to impress the interview panel? Probably not. Much better to prepare well in advance, understand what the selection criteria are, and think about that as well. Next thing I'm going to show you is, uh, is the real gold thing that you absolutely must do. So let's step outside. Oh, let's talk about power posing, because this is, I reckon, the most critical part of your scholarship interview process. You know, there's this thing in psychology where your mind follows your body, and it's absolutely true. If you think about what it's going to be like, you're going to be sitting there with your questions in front of you, and a lot of people will be sitting there in a chair, all hunched up, and they're going to feel small. Okay, you feel small. You feel like you're making yourself small and you're being introverted. That's not what we need. When you step into that room, you need to be tall and you need to be open and you need to be confident. And that's why you need to go into the bathroom after you've had a read of those questions and you need to power pose. I'm gonna show you what a power pose looks like. Okay, let's demo the power pose. And I've got a little bit of help here from Ben from AIM Overseas, who's, uh, who's gonna stand guard on the uh, bathroom door because this could be really awkward and go really wrong if somebody walks in at the wrong moment. Come on, let's, uh, let's demonstrate the power pose. Okay, so we've talked about power poses and how power posing opens up your body and improves your psychology and makes you feel big. So let me literally show you the kind of thing that I do. This is gonna look nuts. Nobody's ever seen this before, so don't go telling anyone. But literally the sort of thing that you do when you're going into a big moment like an important interview or an important thing like a major presentation, you gotta be big, you gotta feel like you're gonna rock it. And this is literally what I'll do if I can find a bathroom where there's nobody. I'll be like, come on, all right, open yourself up, be big, all right, be big. Be like, come on, you're gonna rock it. Yes, this is gonna be it, come on, this is gonna be awesome. All right, we're gonna do an awesome job, okay. New combo plan, I'm passionate about this program. I really wanna do a good job. I really want to engage with Asia. I want to connect Australians to Asia. I want to make you know, people understand how important this thing is to the region. And here are all these incredible things that I've done that are going to lead to it. This is going to be amazing. Yes, come on, let's do it. Now, feels really weird when you do that the first time. You know how I feel now? I feel incredible. My heart rate's going a little bit. I feel like I'm open. And I'm ready to go in there and absolutely rock this interview. If you've never done this before, you'll absolutely find this transformative. So please make sure, if you do nothing else, walk into the bathroom in DFAT and do a power pose. And if somebody sees you, um, when somebody walks in and you're power posing, be unapologetic, being like, I'm preparing for a new combo plan interview and I'm gonna rock it. All right, let's talk about that horrible, uncomfortable subject. And that's the question of being nervous. Even the most confident of people, when they walk into an interview where you've got a scholarship, the most prestigious scholarship for uni students in the entire country is on the line, you're gonna be feeling some nerves and you're gonna be feeling a little pressure. That's normal. And that's why the power pose that we were talking about is so critical, because that's gonna make you feel good in yourself. Now, that's not gonna necessarily get you the whole way there, right? When you walk in, even though we've got that strong psychology going, we've got the good pose, we're feeling confident, you're still gonna feel some nerves when you walk in and you see that lineup of four people, five people sitting on the, the panel with their hands folded. You might feel a bit nervous. This is normal, guys. You know what, every single person that's sitting on that panel has probably sat through, I don't know, 200 interviews, 500, 1,000 interviews in their life. Your nerves are not gonna surprise anyone. So it's not gonna be a question about you having to excuse your nerves for them um, or try to convince them that the nerves aren't there because that's not realistic. We know you're nervous. Some of the really good chairs of um, interview panels that I've seen over the years will actually address that out and be like, are you feeling nervous? And um, interviewees say, yeah, of course I'm feeling nervous. And they say, don't worry, you know, because we're there to find out about you. You know about you. It's just that we don't know about you, so you need to tell us about you. That's what you're there for. And you should be able to explain you to us without any trouble. So drop the nerves. And if you are just one of those people that you're horribly nervous and you feel like it wrecks everything for you, okay, and you fall apart, don't panic. Do your power pose. When you come in and you meet the panel, make sure you get your handshake right. We're talking about handshakes in this video as well. And then sit down and if at some point you're feeling absolutely 
overwhelmingly nervous and you feel like you're stuttering, just stop, okay? No one on an interview panel is gonna freak out if you just stop and you take a deep breath and you just say, you know what, I really feel nerves. I'm just one of those people, I really feel nervous and you know, this is a big deal for me. You know, I really wanna tell you all about myself um, and, and, and you know, tell you about my potential and tell you about how I'm gonna contribute so much to the goals of this program. Have a deep breath and then go on, okay? Catching your thoughts is okay and don't feel bad about explaining it to the panel because it's not something that they won't have seen before. We've all seen it before. So chill out, you'll be fine. Boo. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about what it means to actually answer questions that get put to you. You know, what we're looking to assess is your potential. You've heard me say that plenty of times. Your potential and how you can not only deliver um, on the goals of the program, but what you're gonna be able to contribute back to Australia as a whole. Think about it, guys. This scholarship is worth like $60,000. It's a huge amount of investment that the Australian government, the Australian taxpayer, will be making in you. So what are you actually going to return in terms of value to the Australian taxpayer, the Australian government, to Australia's mission as a country? Now, when it comes to giving those responses, you're gonna be asked some questions, of course, and you wanna be concise about how you respond to those. And there's a technique to that. Some of you folks will have heard that, but if you haven't, I highly recommend that you jump on the internet and do a little bit of research around the STAR technique and also the SEAL technique. I'm gonna talk about SEAL. SEAL means um, situation, effect, um, um, A for something, and learning, action and learning, okay? Situation. If you're gonna explain um, a skill or a situation you are in um, that addresses that particular question, what was the situation? E is for effect. What effect did that situation have on you? So like, um, I lost my passport, the effect was I freaked out like crazy. Action, what did you do? What did you actually do to address that situation? Um, how did you get yourself out of that situation, etc., etc. And the most critical part, if you're using the SEAL or the STAR technique, is the last part, the learning part. What did that teach you? What did you learn out of that? What did that contribute to you, both in terms of skills or values or knowledge? Because those are the sort of, sorts of things that will tell the interview panel, without a shadow of a doubt, what your potential is. And that's the most important thing. Okay, let's talk about when you're in the interview situation when you first walk in. Now we've talked a lot about preparation, but uh, you've probably heard um, the expression that when you walk into an interview, you've got eight seconds to convince somebody whether you're the right person for the job or not. Now there's some truth in that for sure. We talked about psychology a bit before. Yes, people form opinions very quickly but you're actually going into an interview panel with really experienced interviewers. So they'll actually look beyond those eight seconds, absolutely. But first impressions really count. So let's talk about the handshake, because it's critical. Um, let's find, Annie, Annie. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Okay. Hey, I'm sorry, this is really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy, who's um, manager of the Global Society. Um, Hi everyone. What I wanna do is just to demonstrate a handshake. So this is for um, New Colombo Plan scholars. Mm -hmm. Um, who are about to go and do an interview and they're going to walk into a room with a whole bunch of people um, that are going to interview them. So it's that kind of strange moment. So let's demonstrate a few handshakes. All right, so hi, Andy, I'm Rob. How's, how's that? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> no. What am I doing? Um, you're doing the, the dead fish, I think. <laughs> the dead fish. <laughs> Very good, I haven't heard that one before. Oh, limp handshakes, they're terrible. Okay, so that's handshake number one, is you get, get handed the limp fish, that was the dead fish, that's awesome, I love it. Okay, let's try another one. Um, all right, let's go. Hi, Andy, I'm Rob. Hey, Rob. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that? I didn't like that one either. Um, I felt like you were trying to um, kind of commandeer the situation, yeah. take over a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's like the, the aggressive one, right? Where you might encroach in somebody's personal space. The handshake is too firm. And people have a tendency, I think, to do this one just because they're nervous and they tend to overdo it. Mm. Um, and that's, that's definitely a no-no. People don't like feeling, feeling like they're being pushed down when they're, when they're meeting you for the first time. All right, let's just do a nice, normal handshake. All right. Hi, Andy, I'm Rob. Hey, Rob. Awesome. Okay, 
So how did that feel? That felt nice. Nice. You looked me in the eyes, you smiled, um, you said your name. It was comfortable. Yeah, exactly. So your handshake has to be firm, mm -hmm. of course, good eye contact, but try and make it sincere. Like, don't try and be over the top. You know, what we want to do is see you, your personality. Mm. Yeah. Great. That's it, handshakes. Excellent. Fist bump? Fist bump. Nice. Bye, bro. Bye. I'm going to have my tea. Okay. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut. Oh. All right, let's talk about your body position when you're actually sitting at the table. Now this might seem like something that's completely irrelevant, but it's in fact incredibly important. Not only because of the way that uh, the panel will perceive you, but also from your own um, point of view, your own psychology, your own confidence. So let's look at a few key elements. First of all, we don't go to an interview panel and rock back in the chair super relaxed, okay? This kind of gives an impression that we're actually not that serious. Um, and when a scholarships interview panel is looking to basically provide a $60,000 scholarship and somebody who's gonna represent Australia, yes, we're looking for somebody that can go with the flow a bit and can contribute, but not somebody who's so relaxed that they're just chilling all the way back here. Same, the other thing that you don't wanna do is to be underneath the table like this, okay? When you're underneath the table, this has the effect, like we were talking at with the power pose, of actually closing yourself up and shutting yourself off. And that has some negative consequences, not only in terms of the way that the interview panel will look at you, but mostly in terms of your own psychology. If you're kind of sitting down here, you've got your hands under the table, and you're a little bit kind of cut off, your responses are gonna be cut off. You know, you're not gonna be open to responding, you're not gonna be feeling that comfortable. The best way for you to sit at the table is to come in, edge of your seat, hands on the table in front of you, nice and clear, and lean forward a little bit, okay? This is not necessarily the most natural position, but it's the one that's gonna make you feel the most open. Because if you're sitting up straight and tall, you're gonna feel big, and in your brain, your brain's saying, hey, I'm doing a good job, I'm really engaging well. So if at some point in the interview, you feel like you're not responding to something that well, take a moment to sit up tall, to smile, because your, your face is connected to your brain, and when you smile, it makes you feel better. So make sure you smile. Sit up tall, smile, and make sure you have your hands out in front and that you're leaning in towards the panel. This creates a dynamic where you're actually engaging with the panel, and the panel engages with you. The thing to remember, you know, before we were talking about the fact that the interview panel is gonna be sitting there for two or three days, you might notice when you come in, if you're coming in mid-afternoon or mid-morning after several other interviewees have been in, that the panel themselves might be kind of sitting back a little bit and might be a little bit fatigued. If you come in and you engage in this kind of way, you're sitting and you're ready to engage, your hands are ready to almost reach out to the people on the other side of the table, you will literally notice people starting to engage with you. So this is actually a critical element. When I actually um, present, and when I'm gonna be um, in this kind of situation, I like to have my hands kind of open, and I like to have my fingers together like, like so, because this allows my hands to go wherever they naturally wanna go. Some people don't like to use their hands. I love to use my hands. If you kind of lock them down, if you hide them on your knees, if you sit on them, your hands can't go where they need to go. And um, body language is an important part of communication. So I like to start in a nice neutral position like this, and then my hands will go wherever they need to go. You guys are gonna rock it. To wrap up this video, I'm actually gonna put a link at the end of this of another TED Talk that you absolutely must watch. And it's from a guy called Simon Sinek who does um, a phenomenal job of explaining um, how to engage with people and how to get people on board. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get people on board with your mission and your message. And his core message in this TED Talk is, you don't buy, people don't buy what you do, they buy, why are you doing? Okay, you guys can go away now. Yep, thanks, yeah, thank you. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and hear um, some of the uh, experiences of previous New Colombo Plan scholarship recipients and their advice to you from the interview panel. I really hope that this video has been helpful to you and I hope to see some of you guys in the panel itself. Good luck. My biggest piece of advice to someone that's about to go into an interview panel is twofold. The first is don't be intimidated. Um, you're going to walk into that room and there's some really high power people, but they're there to make sure that you're going to get the best experience you can. The second thing would be that 
if you've got to the stage where you're at the interview panel, they already want to hear from you. They, where they're waiting for you to give them an excuse to give you a scholarship. So just go in there and just tell them what you do. Um, and don't get too intimidated by the fact that there's four of them sitting in front of you. Uh, my advice to you as a student about to go and undertake an interview would be just to relax and be yourself. The fact that you've gotten this far to the interview pro through the interview process is a good sign. Um, they obviously like you and they just want to find some more out about you. I know it's easier said than done to just say don't be nervous, but it really wasn't that scary. Everyone there wanted the best for me. They weren't confrontational by any stretch. And I noticed that they were smiling and laughing along because I was relaxed and enjoying the interview process once I settled into it. So I was almost sick with nerves before the interview, but once I sat down, it was okay. So don't stress too much. I'd say have a think about the people who might be on that panel um, and, and what questions they might ask and what they'd be wanting to get out of it. Put yourself in their shoes and, and think not just what you want to get out of it, but how are you going to influence the goals of the program and the people that are sitting on those panels and why they're there and the firms that they represent or the organisations that they represent. So when you're about to go into the interview session, um, it's important to remain calm. Um, and to not get too nervous about the whole situation. Um, and it's also important to stay um, truthful in your answers and um, try and line up the MCP program with your um, aspirations in life. My advice for someone who's about to go into the interview for a new Colombo Plan scholarship is to really think about not how it's going to benefit you, but sell it in how you're going to benefit the program and when you come back how it's going to really change Australia and in general not just yourself. Stay calm, be true to yourself, don't just try and do what every, oh, words, don't do what you think like everyone will be saying you need to show what makes you different and like I said just being true to yourself and I feel like in previous interviews that's maybe where I fell back but in that interview everyone was very relaxed and there they're very friendly like it makes it so much easier. Just stay calm, take a sip of water, it makes a huge difference in between. You've already made it to the interview and I think they already understand that your capabilities are there. They just want to see that you can express yourself and you'll be an incredible ambassador for Australia. So just relax and enjoy telling them about yourself in a comfortable way and they'll make you feel comfortable as well. So don't stress. So my advice when you're going into your interview is to just really be yourself. They want to see your passion for the Indo-Pacific region and you've clearly already demonstrated that in your application. Just going in there, telling them exactly what you want to do, why it'll be helpful, why you think you'll be able to um, be a good Australian ambassador for um, building the bridges between Australia and the region. I think that's what they're looking for. Be yourself, be excited, show your passion and I think that will get you far.